Hello everybody, it's uh, Jay Roe. We're going to be going through a match of Fishers here. Fisher's black and he's playing against Wolf, uh, Wolfgang Unzicker uh, in 1966. Uh, the tournament was in Santa Monica. And uh, I picked this game because uh, Fisher's playing against the King's Pawn opening. And um, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, you know how he handles his... Uh, his favorite opening from white, which is the king's pawn. So we'll get into it here. So Wolfgang opens up uh, king's pawn, and uh, Fisher actually plays the Sicilian. And if you look through a Fisher database, uh, you can find a, a good number of times he used the Sicilian against the king's pawn. And you know, I personally think that uh, Fisher was probably the greatest player of all time that ever played the king's pawn opening. And um, if there's a person in the, you know in the world that knows how to defend against it and uh, come out with an advantage, it's definitely got to be Fisher. So he plays the Sicilian here, and uh, Wolfgang uh, continues uh, developing knight to f3. And now Fisher plays uh, pawn to d6. So he's uh, he's putting his pawns into a position of possibly trading uh, his c pawn for a center pawn at one point. And Wolfgang plays pawn to d4 now which is a, a aggressive move and uh, Fisher can trade that pawn off now so he's uh, won a center pawn for uh, his C pawn. Now Wolfgang uh, to take back, uh, he doesn't want to use his queen here obviously because it's bringing his queen out very early uh, to take back he uses his knight so his uh, knight now has been moved two times in the opening um, which basically lets Fisher uh, move another piece out um, with tempo. So he's now attacking this undefended pawn and um, Wolfgang brings his knight out to c3 to defend that pawn. Fisher plays pawn now to a6 and Wolfgang plays bishop to e3 or sorry e2 which is a good development move and then Fisher now attacks this undefended knight. Now it is defended by the queen um, but you don't want to lose a knight for a pawn so he pretty much has to move this knight again so that's the third time he's moved that knight now and um, Fisher can continue to develop. So, you know, in terms of um, White's extra move at the beginning, um, Fisher's pretty much equalized. He's uh, developed, every move that Fisher has done has been a developing move, whereas uh, Wolfgang had to uh, expend a couple moves on that knight um, to uh, one, capture the pawn, and then uh, to uh, get out of the pawn's uh, attack. So from here, uh, Wolfgang plays bishop to g5, attacking the knight, and Fisher simply uh, develops bishop to e6. There's no real threat from that bishop currently, and um, he takes the knight now, and Fisher recaptures with the bishop. Wolfgang plays knight to d5, which is a nice spot for the knight to be in. However, Fisher's got this bishop here if he does need to take care of that knight in the future. And Fisher just develops knight to d7, White castles and black castles. So that was pretty much the uh, the opening segment of the match. Fisher went on to win this match, uh, but let's take a look at how uh, both players fared in the opening here. So we'll start with uh, with Wolfgang's uh, opening. So um, as we already talked about, this knight had to move three times uh, in the first ten moves. So uh, this knight has used up a lot of White's uh, tempo. Um, Plus, it's positioned a little bit off to the side here. It can still influence some squares, however. It can still influence here, there, there, and there. Um, but it is off a little bit to the side, almost like it was just developed, um, you know, at some point. And uh, he's got a bishop here attacking two diagonals, which is okay. And his queen can come out on the uh, D file. And the rook can jump into the action quite quickly here uh, to e1. And this rook is a little bit sealed in currently due to the queen. Um, this knight is a very well placed knight here on uh, on d5. Uh, it's got a outpost position. Um, but Fisher does have some options to take care of that knight. And Fisher um, has got a really solid position as well. Um, all his pieces were developed um, naturally. Um, he didn't have to waste any moves defending or, or anything like that. His bishops are very well placed here. He's got an attack along this diagonal. He's defending this pawn and could have access to that angle. And this bishop here um, as well has access to the left side of the board. And you'll notice that his queen here does as well. Um, is supporting this bishop. So he's got a lot of nice uh, kingside attack possibilities here. And this knight here is well placed. It can influence uh, c5 here. 
uh, e5. Uh, it's protecting uh, f6 so he doesn't have to break up Hardy's castle position if this bishop were to be taken. And also uh, b6. This rook can come out quite quickly to the action here along the c-file. And this rook can come out quite quickly as well. So it's a, it's a fairly uh, good, strong position for Fisher, I would say. Like, I mean, it's not... Um, you know, it's still in the opening of the match, but in terms of who's got the better position of the pieces out of the opening, I would have to say that uh, Fisher definitely has a tighter position here. And I mean, uh, don't mean tight in a negative way, I mean it's just a, a tighter, more coordinated position that he can work from. So that's uh, pretty good. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip now to... Um, since I've got time, these uh, opening videos are a little shorter. I'm going to flip to a match that I had on the Free Internet Chess server um, after I analyzed this uh, opening here, and I actually tried the opening. So we'll quickly go through that. So um, let's flip over to that now. Due to the time limits of YouTube here, I can't uh, take too long with this, so we'll just uh, flip through it fairly quickly. So my opponent plays pawn to uh, e4, and I get into the Sicilian. He plays bishop to c4, and I get my pawns into the same structure as uh, Fisher had them there. He plays pawn to d3 instead of 4, which is fine, so I just develop my knight to f6. And then he plays uh, a development move, knight to c3. Um, so I make a push now. I go up to e5. He plays knight to f3. I put my bishop uh, where it was in the Fisher match on uh, e7. And he moves pawn to a4. I castle, he castles, and then I move my bishop to uh, e6. He plays pawn to a5, and I just take this bishop here because there's only one piece that he can use to recapture, which is his center pawn. So I've uh, effectively separated his center pawns. So I've accomplished a similar goal to what happened in the Fisher match, uh, but I didn't have to use my c-pawn to do that. So I play pawn to a6, blocking his from coming down any farther. He develops knight and I put knight to c6. Um, I probably should have put knight to uh, d7. That would have given me a, a little bit better um, or similar position that, that Fisher had in his match. But I was at the time I was looking at uh, d4 as a good jump point for my knight. So it was a good match. And one thing I noticed about the Sicilian defense against the king's pawn was that it allowed for some sharp tactical play. Uh, so I definitely enjoyed that. Um, I did go on to win this match here. Um, but, um, you know, I think that uh, I'm finding it useful to look through uh, Fisher's uh, opening strategies. And I uh, hope you are too. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Take care.